For a year now, I've been using the Manfrotto 055 tripod with the X-Pro ball head as my main filming setup. I thought I would give you a review of the product since I've been using it for a year. What I like about it, what I don't like about it, and also place a link to it down in the description below. The base of the tripod has rubber feet, which makes it excellent for rocky ground, paved ground, or any other kind of surface. Each leg of the tripod has a clamp that allows you to adjust the leg, and it is very sturdy, has a nice click to it whenever it snaps closed. Now, I will say one thing about this. I have had one failure where the screw here came loose and the whole leg fell off. Uh, but all it took to get that fixed was a star bit, as you can see here, and just push it back on, tighten it down. The back side of each leg has a dimple on it where it's not completely round. So back here is the flat end. And that is very helpful for lining these back up if one of these uh, clamps comes off here. Two of the three legs have rubber grips on them. It says Manfrotto there on the handle. And this is great for when it's cold or hot out. It's much uh, more comfortable to grab that than to grab that metal pole. So definitely nice to have that on two different legs. Another great feature of this tripod is this clip right here. You're able to push down on that and pull the leg out past the usual spot. So for instance, this leg can go almost all the way out, 90 degrees from the rest of the tripod. This can be helpful if you need a wider base. Say you were trying to get over a creek So for instance, you could do this and you can have a very wide base. When the legs go back into position, you can hear them click. That way you know that it's gonna be secure when you let go. There's a rubber stopper you can pull loose to attach more gear with a pole or some kind of 3 8 threaded object there. This tripod has access to a middle column here. You have to loosen this and it just pushes up here. You can tighten that down and it will add an extra foot and a half of pole here, which is actually taller than I am. And also, if you want to use another feature, there is a button up under here that you can push and that allows this to go up past that center column like that and it folds over and I recommend pushing this in just a little here to give it some extra strength that can spin a full 360 and I recommend that you anchor it over one of the legs before tightening it down that way, it has a little extra strength whenever it uh, has weight on it. One issue I have found is that the center column piece, once it's up, only has one place that it can go back down at. There is a little triangle right here on this side, and right here is where it goes. It's kind of unmarked, so you just kind of have to feel around and find where it clicks down there. Continuing up the tripod, this is a level that spins around a 360 that is part of the tripod. And you can see it's got a little level bubble up here. Now one thing I've found is if you let this all the way down where it touches, it's difficult to move this piece around because it is connecting with the tripod. So what I've found is you can just bring this up just a touch, tighten it down, and now it swivels around freely. Much better. 
And the reason that you would want this to be freely swiveling around is for your connections on this ball head. Uh, for instance, if this one, we'll get to in a second how these work, but if you pull that out, it's going to connect with that and you won't be able to swivel this around. And oftentimes I find that this just happens to be sitting right there when I go to loosen this knob. That's a quick look at the tripod. Now let's take a look at the X-Pro ball head. Let's start from the top down. It comes with two bubble levels, one up here, one on the side, and it has a plate attachment here. And there's the plate. It's got uh, a nice D-ring back here so you can swivel that around to attach to your camera. It does have an automatic receipt there, which is nice, very sturdy. And if you'll notice how that works over here is that you push down on this lever, open that. When you let go, this little plastic piece in here holds that up. So there's a plate, we'll snap it back down. There are three knobs here on the ball head. The larger knob is what will allow the ball to swivel freely. So it can just 360 and then turn over here as a 90 degree. Very handy to have that. Now, if for some reason, like let's say you've got something uh, where it doesn't lock down where you want it, you can pull out the knob and reseat where that uh, long piece is going to be. Very handy. I use that quite often. This little knob over here is a, uh, it says a plus and minus there. So if I loosen the ball head, but then turn this uh, towards the plus, this is gonna move very firm. Whereas if I turn it down to the negative, it's very, very loose. I tend to keep mine a little bit more towards the uh, firm positive side. The last knob over here, when loosened, allows the ball head to swivel from the base. And that's a, a full 360 down there. I don't use that as much as uh, the ball head because the ball head can do the same thing uh, up here. But um, you may find that to be helpful. One instance where I find it helpful to have both knobs moving is when it's in this position. Say you've got your camera up here on the top and you want to take a landscape photo up here. Um, you can't always have this at the same angle. So um, let's say you're wanting to get something down over here. Well, you would have to turn everything this direction. So now that 90 degree is pointing downwards and you would use both knobs there. Something that I was concerned about when I first purchased this combination was how well that the head was going to fit on the tripod because I thought it just screwed into a 3 8 inch screw. But that's not the uh, thing that's really keeping this in place. It's this set screw down here. You can see right in here um, that will keep you from accidentally spinning the head off the tripod. So very nice feature to have that down here. A feature that I've used a couple times is allowing the tripod to be practically on the ground with the pole stuck out for photos or video that are right up next to the ground. So you can see the legs are completely folded in and folded up with the center pole sticking out here. It can be handy if you want to get something that's going to be really low to the ground. Two negatives about this tripod. First, it's rather expensive. Uh, with the ball head and the tripod, you're looking at well over $300. So, uh, but the quality is great, so it's gonna last. And that's definitely a plus for the price. The second thing is the weight. Uh, with a DSLR, with lens, microphone, the ball head, and the tripod, it's very heavy. Uh, let's say I'm gonna have to carry a bag in one hand tripod and the other. Uh, I may have to rest or swap hands if I'm walking, you know, 100 yards or so to um, film something. So definitely have to consider the weight. 
probably not a tripod you're going to want to throw onto a backpack and just take off into the woods because you'll be fatigued by the time you get there. So those are the two main downsides. The upsides are quality is great. I've only uh, had that leg to come off and that's mainly because I'm known for popping that lock and just letting it fall down and it's just finally pushed off the other side of the leg. So quality, top notch, and name brand of course. <sighs> so name brand, definitely a good thing. I've had zero failures in actual product over a year. Maybe a little scuff in paint, but that's because I'm pretty rough on things. So if you are looking for a great tripod for your filming setup, I do recommend this 055 from Manfrotto and the ball head, the X-Pro ball head. I will have a link to both of these in the description below. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. If you know somebody looking for a tripod, hit that share button. I do appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Bye.